Qualcomm have released many different smartphone chipsets this year from top end to low end and I have five different ones here to showcase for you today in the Santutu benchmark run. We have the Asus ROG Phone 3 up against the Xiaomi Mi 10 Ultra, Redmi Note 9 Pro 5G, Redmi K34 G and Pocophone M3. All smartphones here have been updated to their latest available software. We have four MIUI phones over here all rocking different software updates besides for the two on the right which are the same and they are all running Android 10. The ROG Phone and Xiaomi device both come with 7 nanometer plus processing tech, though the ROG has a Snapdragon 865 plus the best of the set here, the Xiaomi has the vanilla Snapdragon 865. The Redmi Note 9 Pro 5G has the Snapdragon 750G run on 8 nanometer tech, the Redmi K30 Snapdragon 730G also on 8 nanometer tech, and the Poco M3 running a lackluster Snapdragon 662 running on old school 11 nanometer technology. The ROG Phone 3 can unlock its 160 hertz frames per second option, which is hidden within the phone itself. No routing needed, otherwise we have the Mi 10 Ultra, the Redmi Note 9 Pro 5G and Redmi K30 all sitting at 120Hz with the only one limited to 60Hz being the Poco M3. We have IPS LCD screens on the three Xiaomi devices on the right hand side, though the Mi 10 Ultra comes with an LED panel and the ROG Phone 3 has an AMOLED one. All phones will be using their included performance mode options such as Game Turbo and Armory crates on the ROG Phone and Xiaomi devices respectively. We're going to be running Antutu version 8.5.0 for the first time on the channel here today. I'm really excited to see the differences between a smartphone with the highest top end chip of 2020 and the lowest Qualcomm chip. This is Technic and without further ado, let's go. Checking out the battery percentages at the start of the test, of course, we will compare this at the end of the test. All the battery capacities are labeled there in case you've forgotten about those. We're also gonna be using an infrared heat gun with an emissivity level of 0.5 since it's the most accurate when testing out electronic devices with room temperature around 21.1 degrees in Celsius. Once again, we're testing this out now, but we will compare this at the end to see which one gained the most in temps. But as of right now, the Poco is the coolest and the Xiaomi Mi 10 Ultra is the hottest. Hitting start over here, we're starting the two powerful chips on the left hand side at the same time and the three weaker chips on the right hand side at the same time as well. I'll be speeding through certain sections and slowing down other sections so that you guys can see the performance and lagginess of each chip. As of right now it's pretty much going in order. The ROG Phone 3 and Mi 10 Ultra are both buttery smooth while the Redmi Note 9 Pro 5G is not doing a bad job. The K30 sometimes looks a little bit smoother than it and the Poco M3 running the Snapdragon 662 chip just does not look good at all. This is not a high performance a phone, but you can get it at a starting price of $129, making it the cheapest of any phone on this table. But the Redmi Note 9 Pro 5G in China is just over $200, and if you buy it overseas, it's around $300, same as the Redmi K30. So for just an extra hundred or so, or probably actually just double the price of the Poco M3, you will be getting around double the performance, but we'll have to wait and see for the end results here. You can see the Poco M3 is lagging behind quite a lot over here. And just on that note, I must say I'm super excited to take out Qualcomm's 5 nanometer processed no chipset, the Snapdragon 888 next year. I can't exactly tell you which phone we'll be getting at first, but I'm pretty sure you guys have a good idea. I'll be getting my hands on that phone hopefully sooner than it actually gets announced to the rest of the world. And I am super duper excited to test it out against the predecessors Snapdragon 865 Plus and 865 processing chips of this year running on 7 nanometer tech. Back to the test here, we're in the third part of Antutu. You can see the Poco hasn't even made it to the third part yet where the other devices have. Even the Redmi devices have made it thus far. And the ROG Phone and Mi 10 Ultra still stutter a bit in this third part of Antutu version 8.5. Though they don't stutter quite as badly as the Redmi Note 9 Pro 5G. And I think the Snapdragon 750G is showing its true colors here when performing slightly better than the Snapdragon 730G within the Redmi K34G. Still waiting for that Poco M3 to start round three over here and here we go let's see it'll be really interesting to test out the lag but literally going frame by frame here i'm guessing one to two frames a second on the Pocophone M3. The Snapdragon 865 Plus and 865 on the left hand side will be hitting around 15 frames per second based on an FPS test that I did with Antuto on my channel a couple months back. Make sure to check that out after this video. I'm assuming the Redmi devices are hitting around 10 FPS and that Poco, like I said, between one and maybe five frames per second. It's going ridiculously slow, but I guess 
you get what you pay for at the end of the day. Moving on to the scrolling speeds between the ROG Phone 3 and Mi 10 Ultra, 160 hertz and 120 hertz. There's really not much of a difference over here. You're not going to feel much of a difference with day-to-day -day use, let alone see much of a difference when gaming. And moving on to the Poco M3, slowing that one down by 10%. Is 60 hertz really that bad? I guess if you go to a high refresh rate panel, then yes, it is going back to that. The ROG Phone 3 had a whopping 27.3 milliamp hour per minute drain, which is the worst here. So even though it didn't drain the most in terms of percentage, it did get the worst milliamp hour per minute reading because it has the largest battery. First being the Redmi Note 9 Pro 5G with 13.2, which is absolutely incredible. I can't wait to test that out in an upcoming drain test, so stay tuned for that one. The Xiaomi Mi 10 Ultra was the hottest overall temperature here with 43.2 degrees in Celsius and added the most in degrees Celsius with 10.8. With the coolest here being the Poco M3, of course, it had to do the least amount of work. We'll get to the score in a second, but 32.8 degrees in Celsius is great. We did have the least amount of addition in terms of temperature with the Redmi K30, only adding 5.2 degrees in Celsius. With final scores, you would kind of expect the strongest chip all the way on the left to come out first and the weakest chip all the way on the right to come out last. Well, it's kind of the case, but the Mi 10 Ultra actually came first here with the vanilla Snapdragon 865 chip as opposed to the overclocked Snapdragon 865 Plus chip on the ROG Phone 3. Third place was well behind first and second here with the Redmi Note 9 Pro 5G with 345,000 points, which is honestly really not that bad for the price points of this device. The Redmi K30 with 272,000, not much of a difference between the Snapdragon 750G and the 730G, but there is a big difference between those two and the Poco M3 Snapdragon 662 on 11 nanometer tech, getting a crazy low score of 175,000. The best CPU is allocated to the ROG Phone 3 and worst to the Poco M3. Best GPU to the Mi 10 Ultra this time around, worst GPU, still the Poco M3. The best memory, ROG Phone 3 once more, and the worst, of course, the Poco M3. The best user experience, also the ROG Phone 3, steaming three categories from Xiaomi, and the worst being on the Poco M3. I hope that you guys enjoyed watching this video as much as I did making it. A sub to the channel would be fantastic. Until next time, this is Technic.